Sup, you beautiful bastards? Hope you having a fantastic Wednesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about today, one of the most requested stories over the past three days, a story that I hate we're having to cover still in 2018, and that is a story around Daddy05, aka now Family05, specifically Mike Martin and Heather Martin. If you are not familiar, I do not feel like once again showcasing the videos they put online and the clips that we pulled from them of what appears to me as child abuse. If you're unfamiliar with this story, I'll link to our coverage from past episodes down below. The main point, there were children being hit, screamed at, crying, seemingly just being broken down. All for YouTube views and profit, the family said that the kids were acting. Ultimately, law enforcement got involved. Two of the children were removed from the home and given to the biological mother. They ended up pleading guilty to child neglect. They've been put on probation for five years. And the big story this week is a lot of people saying, oh my gosh, they're still on YouTube. They just changed the channel name. My response to this is yes, I've known about it. Uh, they took the Mommy 05 channel, changed it to Family 05, which I will say is an odd choice. I understand they went from seven people in a family to five, but that name is just now connected to everything thing that happened to them in the past. And also a big note, when I say happened to them, I mean they are still responsible for everything that happened in my eyes. And as far as the content they've uploaded on this channel, as other people have pointed out, a lot of it does appear to be staged. Even their channel description reads, some events may be staged slash reenacted or exaggerated for entertainment purposes. Also adding, our children will not be the target of any pranks displayed on this channel, not even staged. Which I will say is a weird thing to have in the description and then just on your channel page trailer, the first shot is one of your kids getting hit in the nuts with a ball. Other users have also pointed out moments where Mike appears to be yelling at the kids. The kids are, are seem to not be in the best emotional state. Stop! 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 What the hell? There's another instance where people were pointing out that one of the kids has a bruise under his eye. They end up saying this is from falling off the bed. But that said, trying to look at this situation from all sides. I mean, as a parent, I am aware that you know kids run around like crazy. Accidents do happen. Kids can't get hurt. So I'm not saying that Mike did that. But for all the people hitting me up saying, "Oh my gosh, they're back," they've they've been back for a while. I'm aware of it. There, there are two final notes that I have on this story. One, I consider it a massive failure on the part of YouTube that Mike Martin and Heather Martin are even able to upload videos. Still, their channel was filled with videos that they ended up private but I still have copies of all of them. That appears to be what I consider the wrongful treatment of children, and I don't think that I was alone since the state got involved. And it was over the course of so many videos that that channel should have been struck multiple times to the point that it was shut down, not allowing those people to make content anymore. That's my personal opinion. If someone from YouTube is watching and you're like, oh, well now they removed them so we can't do anything. Once again, there are multiple people that have their entire archive that you profited off of as well. And two, and this is more of kind of the legal aspect of it, and I think it's going to affect a lot of vloggers. When you upload on YouTube, you may now have seen that YouTube has a thing about child actors, children in videos, and it points out that child actors need to follow local guidelines related to child workers. And in addition to that, YouTube's guidelines on this say, if you're a creator and your content features minors, you must do the following. Keep minors physically safe. Never put them in harmful situations that may lead to injury, including dangerous stunts, dares, and pranks. And don't cause emotional harm. Avoid situations that may cause emotional distress, such as exposing them to mature themes. And as people have pointed out without having to even scrub through their videos in their channel trailer, people have pointed out you can see one of the young kids getting hit in the crotch. There's video of two of the minors on the ground wrestling, one kind of cranking the other's neck. You also see a moment that for many was reminiscent of, of what happened with one of the children that was removed in the past, Cody. Specifically, you have a kid screaming for the camera to be turned off. still that moment of seeming distress being uploaded. On a personal note, what I would say there, if Mike, if you're watching, uh, putting putting kind of fun music on those clips doesn't do, should not really change the content. But also on that note, the Martins would likely defend themselves saying that this was exaggerated, that it was staged, that they're essentially acting. And actually, last second update, I was literally uploading today's video and it appears that YouTube has actually finally done something and has removed the Family of Five channel. Now when you go there, it just says, this account has been terminated for violence violating YouTube's community guidelines. And so on a personal note, I say good on you, YouTube. It is it is a bit late, and by, and by a bit, I feel like I'm being very giving there, but good. But that said, of course, that is my opinion, and I wanna pass the question off to you. What is your takeaway from this story? Are you happy to see that YouTube has done this? No, do you think you're there overstepping? Let me know what you're thinking and why. Then, and what are people arguing about online, and I'm actually interested to know what your opinion is news. We had Kylie Jenner in the news because she came under fire after she posted a video where you saw that her young daughter had her ears 
disappears. You had some people saying this is horrible, it's this unnecessary thing, you should wait for the kid to be old enough to consent. But you also had people, and I would argue that it seemed like this was the majority that said, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Pointing to that in some cultures it's incredibly common, there, there are people that do it for religious reasons. As far as me personally, I don't really have a strong opinion either way. So what I end up trying to do with situations like this is I try to check to see what the experts say. And according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, ears may be pierced for cosmetic reasons at any age. And adding there is little risk involved if the piercing is performed and cared for using the proper sanitary procedures and precautions. And on a very specific note, they also recommend that if you do pierce the ears that you use a round earring with a gold post. This to reduce the risk of infection and allergic reaction. But then also adding as a general guideline to hold off on piercing a child's ears until they are mature enough to care for the modifications themselves. And in fact, a pediatric emergency medicine doctor by the name of Elizabeth Murray said, I have seen far too many infants and toddlers choke on or swallow earring parts. I have also seen a large number of earrings end up in a toddler's nose. So I guess to overly simplify their general mindset is if you said it, do not forget it. But with all of that said, I do want to pass the question off to you. And I also, I want to know kind of where you're from, what kind of family you come from, what culture, what religion, if any, and then your opinion. I'm really interested to see what you say on this one. But from that, I want to share some stuff I love today and today in awesome brought to you by SeatGeek. And SeatGeek, if you don't know, is the fantastic ticket app that takes the confusion out of buying tickets for live events like comedy shows, sporting events, concerts. And it's so simple and clean. They put all the tickets in one place. They give them zero to 100 scores so you know if you're getting a good deal or not. And right now is such a fantastic time to try it out. You've got baseball season, obviously football season's coming up. You've got a ton of concerts coming up. Drake, Gambino, Taylor Swift. All on sale right now. And best of all, if you go to SeatGeekPhil.com, you download the app, make sure you enter in offer code Phil. And if you do that, they will give you $20 off your first ticket purchase. So you're welcome. And the first bit of awesome today is actually a reason for why not only should you be subscribed, but make sure that you have your bell rung, not set to occasional, which I don't even know why is an option, but set to all for the Philip DeFranco show for this Philip DeFranco channel. Something I've been testing this week is going live on this channel for 15 to 30 minutes before the Philip DeFranco show goes live on this channel. It's been really fun. It's been like a little bit of a Q&A, a little bit of a response to reactions from yesterday's show, uh, just back and forth. It's little bits of conversation that I know that I crave, some of you crave. And by the end of the week, we'll see if it's actually hurting the views for the show or if there if there is a downside. But all I know is I've been really enjoying it. The people that have been part of it have been really enjoying it. And uh, if you want to be a part of it, uh, ring that bell. And also uh, in the TIA links, I'll include a link to today's live stream. Although if you weren't there, it's just a recording of said live stream. Also on the note of the live stream, since some of you have decided to just meme it into the ground, for those that understand the very specific reference, we have now released uh, pillows and shirts with the Please don't call me daddy gear. It is up for now. It will probably be removed, but uh, soon. I don't feel there's a purpose for it long term, but uh, hey, you do you. Link down below. Then in other community awesome, remember it is Wednesday, so over on to FrancoElite.com, we have uploaded the newest edition of a show that we are currently developing. Today's episode launches into public versus private, stalking, uh, using people as, uh, as as content. And so if you want to check it out, you want to get it early, I'll include a link directly to that post. But then of course, remember we'll release it to the entire public over at YouTube.com slash tomorrow. Then we got a trailer for Patient Zero starring Matt Smith. Side note, Matt Smith is awesome, but David Tennant will always be my doctor. Just drawing that line in the sand for no particular reason. Then we got a trailer for The Darkest Minds. We also got a bit of awesome that I meant to include in the last two shows, but then accidentally forgot. We got an Uncharted live action fan film starring Nathan Fillion. He of course stars as the fantastic Nathan Drake. We also got the Honest Game trailer for Sonic Mania. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. Then in our latest segment of of Elon Musk watch. I'm not going to dedicate any time to that segment. That that text is all you're getting. But the update is now three days after Elon Musk called the British diver who helped save those kids in Thailand a pedo. Well, now he has kind of sort of apologized. In response to someone who posted an article, Elon Musk replied, as this well-written article suggests, my words were spoken in anger after Mr. Unsworth said several untruths and suggested I engage in a sexual act with a mini sub, which had been built as an act of kindness and according to specifications from the dive team leader. Nonetheless, his actions against me do not justify my actions against him and for that I apologize to Mr. Unsworth and to the companies I represent as leader. The fault is mine and mine alone. Now what I'll personally say about this story is, is the timing of his apology and the way he did it is somewhat interesting. Like I said, this comes a full three days after he made the initial comment where he called Unsworth a pedo when he was pushed on it. He also had that other tweet where he said, bet you a signed dollar, it's true. The apology also came after Unsworth said he was considering legal action after a group of Tesla investors said they wanted Elon Musk 
to apologize after Tesla stock had dropped. And that final note that Musk hits on, that the fault is mine and mine alone, it, it comes after what seems to be a lot of negative about Unsworth's actions. Also, it's interesting that Musk is portraying a diver saying uh, he should just stick that sub up his ass as he's saying that I should engage in a sexual act with a sub. It feels the way that he's trying to present it is he opened the door to the sex act stuff. It's interesting. But the good news for Tesla investors is since yesterday, it happens also to be the same day that he said this comment, Tesla stock is back up. And so hopefully this is the end of this part of the story. And in the other side of the story, the actual kids who were rescued, they made their first public appearance today. They all look healthy. We also got some insight as to how they got so deep in the cave. According to the coach, they went in for an hour. When they went to exit, it was flooded. He said they then made the decision to go deeper, thinking there was another way out. And once the team was really trapped in there, just hearing how desperate the boys were, it, it's just, it's heartbreaking. One of the boys saying, I would dig on the cave walls. I could dig three to four meters with rocks to find a way out. Essentially, the coach said he got them to stop so they could conserve their energy, meditate. And the boys also expressed their thanks and condolences to the diver that died in this rescue attempt. And so how I want to leave this entire story after all the updates and side stories with this Thailand cave rescue is that 12 kids and their coach are alive today due to the actions of so many. So many, including a diver who gave his life. And of course, it's important we talk about stories from all angles, but if, if we can look at the net of this story, it is, it, it is an amazing positive. And then let's talk about what I imagine to be the most horrible and rage-inducing story I will talk about today. And this story starts November 18th, 2016. A man by the name of Joseph Saber goes to drop off his three-year-old daughter at a daycare. And that daycare is run by and in the home of 43-year-old Natalia Caria. Reportedly, when Joseph arrived, Caria told him that she had done something bad and that she couldn't take it anymore. She then told him to look at what she had done and they went to the basement. And then he says he heard a baby crying. He rushes downstairs. He finds a child hanging from a noose made out of a girl's tight tied to an overhead pipe. He immediately releases the child. He takes off with the kid. Rhea then reportedly flees in a minivan. She ends up rear-ending a car, shoving that vehicle into another car. Then when the driver of the first car, 37-year-old Salvador Lima, got out to check the damage, Rhea pulled into traffic and dragged him for 10 blocks. Then, oh, it's not over. Then as she continued her escape, she struck a 29-year-old bicyclist by the name of Jacob Kerrigan. And then she struck another car, this time driven by a pregnant woman before pulling over to a nearby overpass. At this point in place, she reportedly threatens to jump, but ultimately passers-by were able to hold her down until police took her into custody. And as far as the child that she hung by a noose, reportedly that 16-month-old child survived and is doing well now. However, the bicyclist reportedly suffered broken bones, had to have a rod surgically implanted in his leg to spare him amputation, but that is still not where this story ends. And like I said, this story started back in 2016, but in February of this year, Korea ends up abandoning a possible insanity defense and instead pleads guilty to attempted murder, third-degree assault, and criminal vehicular operation. The prosecutor, Christina Warren, asks for a 13 year prison sentence and then we got the news this week that Judge Jay Quam sentenced her to 10 years probation. This after reportedly agreeing with doctors that she was a low risk to commit more crimes. Now you may be wondering, Phil, how does someone who tried to lynch a baby, crash and flee the scene of an accident, dragging another human being, then hit another human being who's riding a bicycle, and then hit another person driving a car, and uh, by the way, who's pregnant. How does that person only get probation? Well, the judge described the situation around her action as the perfect storm of factors unlikely to ever be repeated. Now, as far as what are those factors that the judge is talking about, well, during a two hour hearing, Korea detailed how her husband repeatedly abused her and her children after they came to the United States from Ukraine in 2006. She explained that she was suicidal in the weeks leading up to the incident, but then adding, I don't want to push this terrible crime onto my husband, I just want to explain what happened. Your honor, my children need me, give me a chance to resume a normal life. And she then went on to say that her husband would threaten to kill her and physically abuse her, this reportedly including punching her in the stomach while she was pregnant. Additionally, Korea's young adult son from a previous marriage wrote a letter to the court writing that his mother's husband would menace her with a gun and commit other acts of physical abuse. He also turned over four audio recordings of abuse to the court on the mother's behalf. Korea also alleged that the husband drove their family into financial hardship, forced her to work despite her mental issues issues and also refused to let her get professional help because of the cost. And at the time of her sentencing, she had already spent 20 months in jail and now will get credit for her time already served. In addition to this, she'll be on electronic home monitoring for at least two months. She's been ordered to undergo mental health treatment. And as far as the children, right now she's not allowed to have unsupervised contact with her daughters or other minors. And with that, she's also going to have to go through child protection proceedings to see if she is fit as a parent. And I will say after hearing her side of the story, uh, what I, I do want to say as far as my personal takeaway is still what the fuck? She hung a 16 month old child by a new 
prisoners and then proceeded to assault people with a van. In our country, we put people in prison for non-violent drug offenses, and I'm not saying that we should, but that, that is where we exist right now. But this woman not only gets probation, but she may get her kids? And here's the thing, I'm obviously sympathetic to people that have mental health issues, but it could easily be argued that anyone that does anything horrible, it's a result of just mental health issues. Something happened to me and then I snap. You think these horrible monster assholes that are behind stories like someone got a van and just plowed through a group of people, they're in, they're in the right state of mind? But do we go, oh, you know what, maybe just probation. They, they, that, that person was hit as a child. Or you know what, they're not responsible because they're a terrorist organization. They didn't offer them proper mental health care. People need to be held accountable for their actions and when you try to murder a baby, I don't think we cross off the harshest of consequences because they went through some bad stuff too. In my opinion, she's garbage. This judge's decision is garbage. And if this woman does anything ever again in the future, that judge is responsible. Obviously that part is my takeaway, my opinion, and then I do want to pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts about this story? Where do you stand as far as giving this woman probation versus actually putting her in prison? I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. If you're familiar with this show, that there are a few topics that I, I get very passionate about. Always when it comes to stories about kids, especially now that I have two of my own and I have just even more built into me, I, I'm definitely I'm definitely aware that my bias is apparent here and it's based off of my own personal life experience. Uh, and so that's why I pass question off to you, whether you agree or disagree with my takeaway, I'd love to know your thoughts. And then let's talk about the massive international news around Google that has broken a record, although it's not for the best reason. Google has just received a record fine of 4.34 billion euro for breaking antitrust laws in the EU. Reportedly, the European Commission, the day-to-day -day administrators of the EU, had a three-year investigation that was kicked off by complaints from Google's rivals. And these complaints specifically about the company's practices. The complaining companies included Microsoft, Oracle, Nokia, and TripAdvisor. And according to Europe's antitrust chief, they said the investigation found that. Google has used Android as a vehicle to cement the dominance of its search engine. These practices have denied rivals the chance to innovate and compete on the merits. They have denied European consumers the benefits of effective competition in the important mobile sphere. This is illegal under EU antitrust rules. And so now we're seeing this fine, which remember how I said it, it was record breaking? Well, the previous record was 2.8 billion euro and it was actually also Google's record. And that one was from last year because the EU found that Google unfairly favored its own shopping services and search results. And this time to kind of give you the TLDR of the main points, one, investigators found that Google broke the law when it required manufacturers to install Google Search and Chrome as a condition for licensing Google's App Store. That App Store, of course, Google Play, which is a big draw for consumers since it's the largest App Store. Two, Google offered financial incentives to phone makers who exclusively installed only Google Apps. Reportedly, financial incentives were also given to make Google Search the exclusive search engine on the device with no way to change it. And three, Google restricted development of new open source versions of Android. And an example they used is that they prevented manufacturers from using Amazon's Fire OS, which is an Android fork that was based on Amazon's ecosystem. And the European Commission has now said that Google has 90 days to end these practices or the EU will issue even more fines. And those fines will be 5% of the worldwide average daily revenue of Google's parent company, Alphabet. Now, as far as the other side of this, it's being reported that Google plans on appealing the decision, which means this case could go on for years. And in a statement, Google said, Android has created more choice for everyone, not less. A vibrant ecosystem, rapid innovation, and lower prices are classic hallmarks of robust competition. We will appeal the commission's decision. And so what I will personally say is I think that at least for the time being, we're, we're not going to see a massive change from Google here. And looking at the situation as a whole, it doesn't look like this is going to hurt Google or rather the, the dominance of Android. As I have been made aware countless times since I released an app that we are developing an Android version for, it's been reported that Android currently controls 74% of the market. However, if this decision ends up getting upheld, it could severely limit how Google approaches new markets such as automobiles, internet connected home electronics. But that's really the long tail of this story and not what we're most likely going to see over the next 12 to 24 months. And as far as the EU and Google, unfortunately for Google, this is not the last investigation they have against Google. There's also another one going on that alleges that Google restricts third party services from displaying their own ad listings on Google search results. But that said, we will cross that bridge when we come to it. But all of that said, I do wanna pass the question off to you. Do you feel like Google is in the wrong here? And that's where I'm going to end today's show. And of course, remember this is the PDS. It is not just a show, it is a conversation. So whether it be the last story, the first one, anything in between, let me know what you're thinking in those comments down below. And remember, if you like this video, like what I'm trying to do on this channel, if you wanna help love arrive, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, even maybe click that bell, turn on notifications. It helps make sure you don't miss these daily Philip DeFranco shows, which actually, if you did miss yesterday's show, you want to catch up. It is a it is a long one, but a good one. All you've got to do is click or tap right there to watch that one, or maybe you need something lighter. We've got the newest behind the scenes vlog right here. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.